Howdy, howdy, y'all. It is another Maharaj episode. Or chapter. Chapter, uh, 55. Give up all, and you gain all. Um, so, pretty straight. I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't, this may sound like at first, like, like, it, at first it just sounds like, kind of like, oh, just give up, just stop trying. And that's not necessarily what this is, that's not what this is about. It's about, it's not, it's like, yeah, stop trying, but not like stop trying in life. Um, it's not saying don't fulfill, like, one's duties. I mean, this is... I don't think this is what he says at all. I mean, quite on the contrary, especially if you see how Maharaj lives, has lived his own life, especially during this time. I mean, he he was running his... I th- yeah, during this time, he would, I th- I'm pretty sure he would have been, like, running his own small little business out of his apartment. Like, he rolled tobacco uh, cigarettes. Like, and that's kind of how he made a living, if I'm not mistaken. At least that's what I heard. I don't, yeah, so... It's, uh... So he's definitely not saying like don't have a life, but it's but he's also just but he's trying to make you understand is that at the end of the day, there's not really you don't need to it's not what the problem isn't like you need to gain something it's rather the perspective is all off you don't you're not seeing yourself fully you're not fully realizing the full extent to this whole being. And, uh, because even at one point, I, I love how he put it. He, what was it? It was, I forgot exactly how he says it, but, oh, here he goes. Uh, see the contradictions, the incongruities, the falsehood, and the sorrow of the human state, the need to go beyond. Within the immensity of space floats a tiny atom of consciousness, and in, it the entire universe is contained. So I just I love just something about that that wording and this. Oh yeah, because he starts yeah stop imagining, stop believing, st- see the contradictions. I mean this is part of a bigger part that he was talking, but I just like that, especially that the immensity of space floats a, a tiny atom of consciousness, and in it the entire universe is contained. I just love that line. Something about that line in particular. I would say that's probably the line that hits me um, the hardest of this chapter. I mean, there's a couple other really hard-hitting lines. For example, at one point he says, um, freedom from all desire is eternity. Attachment, imp- All attachment implies fear, for all things are transient, and fear makes one a slave. This freedom from attachment does not come with practice. It is natural. When when one knows one's true being, love does not cling. Clinging is not love. <sighs> that that one also, because that uh, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I just like the the, the way that he uh, that line really just something the wording about that line you know this was sometimes like a good quote it was it'll convey a message but it just the way it conveys the message it just hits you in a certain way and you're just like awe inspired that's what you, that's what's good about this chapter there's a couple really uh really good quotes when he does that um but other than that i will say that this chapter does it it's like i say for all these it's a really good t- it's a, he just hits the, the in a head in the nail, you know. He just hits that head in the nail, and he's just hammering away that the point further and further each of these chapters. And uh, yeah, like this, like I say, this chapter really hits hard like that. Um, I even like I found it even funny, like at the very end. This questioner, he even says, "My death is nearing." Which sounds you know, pretty dramatic. Like most people, are like, "Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry." Blah blah blah. Maharaj says, "Your body is short of time. 
not you. Time and space are in the mind only. You are not bound. Just understand yourself that itself is eternity. That itself is is eternity. Just understanding yourself. And I think that's a really good way of summarizing this really what all this is. I mean like even earlier and just a little bit before then too, he even says there is nothing to gain. Abandon all imaginings and know yourself as you are. Self-knowledge is detachment. All craving is due to a, a sense of insufficiency. When you know that you lack nothing, that all there is is you and yours, desire ceases. And so it's like, yes. Yeah, so once again, he's just saying, you fulfill all your desires. You, because you, especially because you won't have them. I mean, that's, yeah, fulfilling desires is the wrong way of saying it. It's really you're transcending the desires and kind of just being like, eh. Which then is the whole reason why life and everything is suffering in the first place, you know, especially according to like a lot of the Buddhists and Dharmic kind of traditions of thinking about the world. So, like I say, this really hits the point at home. I will say... It's funny when these, uh, when Maharaj seems to, well, he'll get under these people's skins a lot. You can tell. Because at one point, the question literally says, you too will die. You know, as it's just sort of trying to gotcha to what, you know, to, to his point what Maharaj had said. And, and actually, even that point that he had said, he because this guy literally says, you will die, you too will die. In response to this, this is what Maharaj had said. What you have, what have you to wait for when it is already here and now? Because this is questioners. It will take much time if I just real wait for re- self realization. Maharaj, what have you to wait for it when it is already here and now? You have only to see, look and see, look at yourself, at your own being. You know that you are and you like it. Abandon all, all imagining that that is all. Do not rely on time. Death, time is death. Time is death, yeah. Who waits dies. Life is now only. Do not talk to me about past and future. They exist only in your mind. And then this is when the question says, you too will die. Maharaj then says in response to that, I am dead already. Physical deaths will make no difference in my case. I am timeless being. I am free from this, of desire or fear because I do not remember the past or imagine the future. When there are no names and shapes, how can there be desire and fear? With desirelessness comes timelessness. I am safe because... What is not cannot touch what is. You feel unsafe because you imagine danger. Of course your body as such is complex and vulnerable, needs protection. But not you. Once you, once you realize you're unassailable being, you will be at peace. So once again saying, you are even beyond the body itself. Yeah, this body itself may be vulnerable in danger, but that doesn't mean you are in danger. Because you, like I said, you are beyond the body. You are beyond the mind. You are beyond all these things. <sighs> and and this, um, yeah, I think I'm. I will say. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I would just end it there. I think I just ended there. That's a good note to end it on. Um, even death, physical death. If you understand yourself, you know, well, actually, rather you understand yourself or not, physical death does not end. And there is war to it, to being, just as you just being, not even just human being, to this whole just existence, being an existing 
thing in the universe, a consistent being in the universe. So much more to it than we can, you know, even just begin to imagine. Anyways, anyways namaste, y'all. I hope y'all have a good one. Peace.